right, here we are, another episode of Canada on the Rocks. I am your host, Patty Kudair, local realtor with the Sutton Group Ottawa. And today I am joined by Trisha Roths, the Director of Special Events and Community Engagement. See, you got it right the first time. That was fantastic. What a mouthful, eh? Yeah. <laughs> so, Tresha, thank you so much for being on the on the podcast here. And then just to, for people that are watching, the premise of this show is really telling people about businesses, organizations, uh, all of the different sort of folks that make up this beautiful city that we live in and how they actually contribute to the city. And it, the good thing about it is it's a, we were trying to shed some light on on who you guys are and what's going on. So we'll start off, if you don't mind, let's just get started with the Ottawa Council Foundation. How did that come to fruition? How long has it been? The journey, if you will. Right. So actually, yeah, we're celebrating 30 years next year. So we have a big uh, gala planned to celebrate that and look forward to all the planning as the director of special events and community. Fantastic. When is that, if you don't want me asking? Uh, it's happening on February 1st. Oh, cool. Five. Yeah. oh, there's a chance for you guys to uh, bring out your tuxedo. and uh, Exactly. And for the gals, bring out your gown and go for a gala. Perfect. Exactly. Yeah. So the Cancer Foundation started originally, it was housed in the Ottawa General Hospital, but where the, all the hospitals amal amalgamated into the Ottawa Hospital. So at that time, we were housed there and provided funds for research and clinical trials. So that was sort of like the, the baby steps of the work that we yeah. did. Um, and then in 2010, we moved into the building where we are now at 1500 Augusta Drive. Uh, where we have our community cancer hub and the model changed over time de delivering frontline services uh, and now we are fully a frontline service mm -hmm. yeah. the ottawa cancer hub so tell me a little bit more about that how did it come to fruition and what are those services that you deliver yeah yeah so in june of 2022 we opened the ottawa community cancer hub and we provide supportive cancer care services. So that's all the wraparound services that somebody needs outside of the medical treatment that happens at the mm -hmm. hospital. So it really complements all of the support that someone needs, whether that's emotional support or psychological support or practical. Yeah. There's a number of different programs that we have that are related to nutrition, like our Simmer and Social, which is a program that happens on Wednesdays. And we have a free lunch for people who use our services. And it's a great opportunity for people to connect and organically have conversations. And it could be about cancer or it could be about their grandkids or what they're doing next week at the cottage or, you know, whatever it is. Um, but a big focus of that program is to really provide people a, a free opportunity to connect in that space where everybody's experiencing something the same. Yeah. Um, and yeah, then we have our cancer system navigation program where we have uh, one, we have three right now who uh, support people when they connect with us to find resources in the community. So I often think about it this way that, you know, when someone is diagnosed with cancer and they're in that appointment, the shock and trauma that sometimes people are experiencing, they walk away from that appointment and then they think about all the questions that they wish they had asked. Yeah. And so our cancer system navigators help people figure out what those the answers to those questions are and if we can't we find the resources for them where they can get those answers and they prepare them for you know upcoming appointments and things like that um, but everybody's journey is unique so it depends on where they are at in their journey when they come to us so some people come to us after they finish treatment and they're ready to access some kind of supportive cancer care and so it may be that they need to connect with some sort of mental health counseling or something like that. So, yeah, I really give major kudos to to them because they really do address all the unique needs that that we encounter. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm, from from the sounds of it, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm from on the wrong path here. It sounds like you guys are kind of like that missing link between the healthcare and the patient, and then the family that wraps around the patient as well. Too. And we do for provide all of those supports to family members as well. So we have children's programming so that children can understand and process what their parents might be go going through and, and process those emotions that they're having. Mm -hmm. We have mental health support as well. So people have you know, one on one counseling uh, that is very cancer specific. So it's not like the counseling that you would find out in the community somewhere. No. The people that we work with, we make sure that they have cancer specific lens. So, yeah, 
And it is definitely something that hits the family, like in general, right? It's not, you know, just because you're the patient, it doesn't mean that that's it. You know, everybody else in the family is affected. And I feel like cancer really hits the whole entire family when it does yes. come. Fortunately, it's pretty prevalent. We've seen it all the time. Everybody's got somebody that they know or somebody in the family or what have you that they either experienced it or been part of it. Some on remission, some are good to go. Uh, so really appreciate that, that, you know, that the fact that you guys have all of those services that are potentially out there to help the community. What are some of the, you know, nuances that you do a little bit different than going to the hospital? I mean, we, we know that that's for the medical part, but some of the things that you guys do specifically around, let's say, healthcare or mental, mental health care. Yeah. So well, with mental health specifically, we do have a psychotherapist who works with us and, and has those appointments happening in our building. Um, people can access her online as well. And really, it is tailored to people's comfort levels, how they want to engage with her. Um, and so, yeah, again, it's that cancer-specific lens. And a lot of what the hospital does is related to medical. And they do have, you know, patient support as well. But the numbers of people who require that patient support is really beyond the capacity of what the hospital can provide. So that's where we step in and we kind of try to address a gap and really let people know that we're here and we can support you with all of those things. And for some people, it's really hard for them to walk back into the hospital, you know, especially if they're post-treatment and they're still needing some supportive cancer care. It's it can be traumatizing for them to walk back into the hospital. Yeah, yeah. Um, as welcoming and wonderful as the hospital can be. People, you know, are having the most challenging time of their lives. Yeah. yeah, so, yeah. so to come into our building where it's very warm and welcoming and people feel and often say like that this feels like a home, a second home to them. It was purpose built with that intention. So, so yeah. I like how you say purpose built. And, and it's, again, it's just all wrapped around cancer, cancer mm -hmm. treatment, really helping folks from a psychological standpoint, nutrition. Talk to me a little bit more about that. Yeah, so often people when, who are on chemotherapy with their cancer, they'll have, you know, difficulties with digestion, even swallowing. It really depends on, you know, what their specific cancer is. But chemotherapy does have an impact on the body that affects your ability to digest and process. And so our nutrition programs are really focused around helping people understand what it is you can eat Ooh. that will help you and how often to eat and things like that. So and chemo is pretty tough. I mean, it's a... Uh... Someone had to describe it to me, and it's a cancer patient, actually. His sort of explanation to me is it's like poisoning yourself to the brink, but then coming back. Right. It's so, trying to kill those cancer cells, but yeah. you know that there's lots of other healthy cells kicking around in there, too, right? So, so it really is trying to best support people in that way. So that's where the practical needs come in as well. So we have mindfulness programs like yoga and things like that to help people stay mobile as well. So, you know, it's really challenging. And sometimes we have athletes who come to us and they can't be as physically active as they were for that period of time. And so they've discovered that through some of our movement programs, they're one, supporting, you know, their muscles and ability to move and maintaining some of that, you know, movement that they already have. Yeah. But it also really supports their mental well being. So it's through the meditation parts of yoga and other things like that. Yeah, it, it feels like a lot of the times cancer is like the when you do have cancer or somebody gets cancer, it's like a, a light just completely shuts down. And it sounds like you guys are providing that little candle to just keep it going kind of thing, which is really I really hope so. Yeah. 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 And I just with that being said, I just want to Kind of dissect it a little bit as far as the services and all of that. Where do you see yourself, you know, needing the most support as an organization and how are you getting that support today? Yeah. So I would say definitely our mental health programs are, have a wait list. Sometimes are, are, you know, there's a healthy amount of people that use that um, and our cancer system navigation. So right now, I think our wait time for cancer system navigation is about two weeks, which is really too long. You know, when somebody is diagnosed and they want that extra support, they want it right now. So we do have a system in place where we have some staff who outside of cancer system navigation who just make that initial touch point so that people feel acknowledged and they know that, oh, yes, you've received my 
you know, information online or you're you're there to help me with that first phone call and you know that you're at, on the list at least. Um, but yeah, we want to shorten that list for cancer system navigation and mm-hmm. try to address that that timeline because Again, when people call or reach out, it, that's when they want to receive that support. Yeah, it, it can feel like two weeks for somebody that just been diagnosed. It can feel like a nightmare. Absolutely. A long, long time, right? Like waiting for two weeks to know, like, where do you stand? What sort of, where do you go from here? Kind of, yeah. That's a long waiting time for sure. With that, just going back on the, uh, on the question, I just wanted to reiterate a little bit. Where are you getting most of the funds for you guys? How are you relying on, you know, what are you relying on for funds? What's, what does that look like? For the most part, we are 100% donor funded. <clears throat> so we're very grateful to our donor network for sure. And that's part of, you know, being in events. That's part of what I do is re- retrieve donor funds through events. But we also have, you know, major donors who donate tens of thousands of dollars to us. Um, and we're just so grateful for every twenty dollar donation as well to our annual fund. Uh, so it's it's really important for us to steward our donors really well and let them know that we really do appreciate them and and that it's not actually about us; it's about the people who are receiving our support. Yeah, and that they are so grateful as well. Uh, we don't currently receive any government funding, so yeah, super grateful for our donors. And for people out there, how do we change? That? How do we change? You know. The fact that it's all donation, maybe get some government funds in there. Like, what are your thoughts on that without being too political? Right, right. Um, we don't currently have an advocacy arm to the Cancer Foundation. We do sort of apply for grants and things like that, but it's a very competitive area to be in. There are lots of people in need in our community. There's some great charities out there for sure that are addressing different needs. But I think that there's a lot of stigma around the word cancer. Um, and there has been for a really long time. Um, you know, we have, like, we're going to talk about Fight for the Cure. And we have events like Laugh for the Cure. Uh, it's really all about the mental health and, like, how you can stay positive in, in this crazy time that you're in. It's like literally your life is put on stand here. You're trying to fight it. Fight Absolutely. For it. I mean, people will, you know, be fearful of a recurrence of cancer for quite some time. Yeah. I don't I'm not sure if that ever really goes away. You know, in yeah. my experience with people who I know personally that you know that's always in the back of their mind and sometimes very much in the front of their mind. It does and I think it if I'm not mistaken um speaking for myself and for some of the people that I know it's it creates this sense of like sort of having a PTSD in a way. For sure. Yeah. Uh, Cuz you're always holding your breath. You're always like uh what if what if what if and you're hypochondria you're like literally checking out everything. Every chance you get, you're like, I'm going to go for a checkup. I'm going to book for a checkup. Um, but the mental health counseling does kind of Exactly. And the, and the cancer specific, because they really hone in on helping you how to manage those feelings and processing. Yeah, and- it's definitely trauma, lots of trauma, for sure. I want to go back to navigating cancer. Like so, so some of the things that you provide, some of the services you provide is navigating. Yeah. Like, what is that all about? Tell me a little bit more introduce it to the people that are out there watching. Yeah, so we work with 70 different community partners. So if we don't do it inside our building, we connect them with that resource. So depending on their kind of cancer and those kinds of things, the supports they're specifically looking for, we connect them with those partners in the community. We also go out into the communities to find out what it is people need. So we, um, in June 2023, We had a community co-design where we invited people from community health centers and a number of different other organizations that represent people from a diversity, equity, and inclusion lens and making sure that we're addressing all the needs that everyone has and that people can access those services, whoever they are, wherever they are, whatever they're bringing to the table as well. So because we know that cancer doesn't, you know, it, uh, no. Yeah, it, and anyone. If, if there's anything that we can right. get from cancer that's positive, is it doesn't discriminate. Exactly. That's the only thing right. that's <laughs> positive about cancer. I'm not so sure. But that's yeah, but but that's everybody. the only thing. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. we want to make sure we're addressing all those needs of people who are coming in, who are who have that additional, you know, the additional things to manage. Already. So what are some of like the frequently asked questions that you guys normally get when it comes to? 
that, the navigation of the system. Yeah, I think I would, our cancer system navigators would be able to answer that much better. But I think, you know, for sure would be things, you know, I'm sure people are talking about survival rates or, or if they're a caregiver, how can they best support that other person? You know, we do support a lot of caregivers. Yeah. Or how can I tell my children? How can I talk to my children about this? How can I help them understand? Mm-hmm. You know, those kinds of things. Mm-hmm. And, and how can I how can I process the grief I'm feeling about the person that I used to be and that I'm not anymore? So I think, you know, there are some really heavy big questions that people have. And then probably some really practical questions. You know, related to the impacts on their body with chemotherapy, uh, things like that. How can I stay active? How can I be mobile? How can I, you know, make t- make sure that I'm, you know, financially going to be okay? You know, we do have very small financial support component to what we do. Um, we also provide uh, food boxes. I think it's once a month to people, so with fruits and vegetables and things like that. So. You know, it's making sure that we're kind of addressing all the different things. Yeah. But yeah, I think some of the things are practical needs and some of the things are, you know, the big heavy questions about, that are, the, you know, the emotional part. I'm not sure if you can help me answer this question, but if I'm not mistaken, some of it is not also covered by OHIP. Like some of the treatments are not covered by OHIP, like some needles, things like that. How do you guys support or help support through that? Yeah, I think what we would do is we'd find a resource that does that. Mm-hmm. Um, and we, because all of our services are free, we only refer to other resources that are also free. And that's, again, that diversity in, and inclusion lens, making sure that, you know, everybody has access to something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we would refer to services that do that. Makes sense. Now that we set up the stage a little bit and we you know, talked about the existence of the Ottawa Cancer Foundation, what you guys do and the great services that you provide. And we're going to try to shift a little bit more around the community engagement and what you actually do yourself at the, uh, at the foundation. So tell me a little bit more about your role. Yeah. So in my role, I coordinate and manage all of our large scale events. I'm fortunate to have also a manager of events and community engagement who works with me and manages some of the smaller scale events and and supports the big ones too. But yeah, so events like Fife and Care, Laugh of the Care, our upcoming gala, things like that, really, um, you know, our breakfast, and things that are, you know, really tell the story of who we are and, and really support us. So And how how many events throughout the year, and it doesn't have to be like the exact number, but just roughly like how many events do you guys run throughout the year? And what are the purposes of each one of those events in a, in a nutshell? Right, yeah. So the signature, signature events are really an opportunity for us to showcase what we do and who we are and, and to, to raise funds. So um, in that raising funds by the fundraiser part, I always acknowledge that that's community engagement as well because like today, you know, you never know who you're going to meet that they or someone in their family is going to experience cancer. Yep, so, so if you're in a crowd of a thousand people and you're talking about what we do and championing, you know, donors and acknowledging through testimonials, wonderful people who are willing to step up and talk about how the, the positive experience they've had in that room of a thousand people who you're hoping are going to donate, they are also someone that's going to use our services up. Yeah. You know, yeah. so... So that's the community engagement part, too, is really letting people know who we are, how to find us, all those kinds of things. So, yeah. And what do you, like, speaking of the community engagement, what do you find, like, one of the biggest hurdles that you guys have in your way as far as setting up these events and getting some of the donations out there? Yeah, so everything costs something, right? So whenever you have, you know, your budget for expenses for events, yeah, but events cost a lot of money. So we try to find sponsors and Sponsorship is something that I'm always keen to talk to people about because there's really lots of great ways for us to showcase our sponsors and and to store them for a long time afterwards as well. So, yeah. So for, for folks that are watching that are interested in a sponsorship, what does that entail? What does that look like? What sort of commitment do they should expect both financially and also as far as time and money and all of that other stuff? Yeah. So... We sell a number of different sponsorship levels within each event package. 
And that could look like, you know, $25,000, being a headline sponsor, um, access to a VIP. So like Fight for the Cure, for example, we'll have George St. Pierre, um, which is exciting for most of the people who attend Fight for the Cure. And they can be part of a meet and greet with him and, and have a one-on-one conversation. Um, whereas, you know, people who are in the general admission of that event would, you know, be able to do a, a photo opportunity with them, but not that same kind of one-on-one conversation. So, and just be celebrated through, you know, our marketing materials and things like that on site, through our social media, on our website those kinds of things and we would certainly give them a shout out for opportunities like this so i will give heart and crown a shout out for fight for the cure Fantastic. So, yeah and heart and crown is actually one of the coolest little restaurants that i've seen in the city like and especially with the multiple locations and things like that yeah it's a great place yeah so how how long so you've been doing this for a number of years at the ottawa cancer how long does it take to set up an event and put it up and running and then like, you know, to put on a good show per se? Really, we, we like to start at least eight months in advance. So, you know, months ago, we started planning for the gala in February. Those kinds of things with events like Fight for the Cure, it's year round. So it really depends. You know, our Laugh for the Cure event, which is being held in March of 2025, we've already started planning. Oh, wow. It really does take, you know, to do it really well. Really need that lead time. So yeah, February you have the, sorry, you said the you. fight for the cure. That's in October. Yes, October twenty six. Twenty six, and then we have the February one. That's the gala, and then for March we have the laugh, yeah. laugh for the cure. So Trisha, thank you. Thanks for the uh, Ottawa Council Foundation for being a guest on our show, and uh, for folks that are watching, if you like what you see, please do not forget to hit the like button. Uh, subscribe and hit the bell icon so that way you can get more and more alerts about episodes that come out and you'll be a little bit more in the know about all of the great businesses and the organizations that we uh, bring on the show to shed some light on this fantastic city that we live in. And Trisha, thanks again. Thank really you. appreciate it. Yeah.